Welcome. This is the sermon for the 3rd of January, 2021. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today is the epiphany of the Lord a time when we remember how wise men followed a star to worship a new king, a time to remember that God was revealed in Jesus. The readings today all reflect the theme of light representing the presence of God. In the passage from Isaiah, we hear that the people of Israel were being called to rise and shine because God's glory is upon them. God is with them. They are favored and loved by God, and they are to let others see that love. The people of Jerusalem are to show their light to the world. The story of the visit of the wise men is unique to the Gospel of Matthew where there are no shepherds or angels celebrating the birth of Jesus. Rather, there are educated foreigners who were curious about what the unusual star seen in the sky might reveal. From the legends which they had studied, they deduced that an important person, a king, was now born in Judea, the land of the Jews. They consulted the ruling king, Herod, as to the birthplace of this child. Herod consulted the priests and heard the prophecy from Micah that a future leader would be born in Bethlehem. The wise ones headed to Bethlehem, where they found Jesus in a house under a star. They worshipped him, presented gifts, and then went home by a, a different path. We are all on a spiritual journey, traveling through our lifetimes, attempting to understand the meaning of our life. Do you identify with the journey of the wise men? If so, what gift will you present to Jesus? In my pondering of spiritual journeys, I came across a short novel titled the Other Wise Men, written by Henry Van Dyke and initially published in the late 1890s. Today, I present an abridged version of this story. The Other Wise Men. In the days when Augustus Caesar was master of many kings and Herod reigned in Jerusalem, there lived among the mountains of Persia a certain man named Artaban, one of the Magi. Artaban, like his friends Caspar, Melchor, and Belchisar, had observed the star and consulted the ancient prophecies regarding the coming child king. Artaban sold all his belongings to purchase gifts for the child king, a sapphire, a ruby, and a pearl. Then he set out on a 10-day journey to meet his friends so that together they might search for the king. Time was short. If Artaban arrived too late, his friends would leave without him. Yet he made good time, and on the 10th day his goal was within his grasp. Only three more hours of hard riding, and he would make his rendezvous with his friends. But suddenly... He saw something before him, and he reined his horse to a stop. He dismounted. The dim starlight revealed the form of a man lying across the road. His humble dress and the outline of his face showed that he was probably a Jew. The chill of death was in his lean hand. Artban turned away with a thought of pity. But as he turned... A long, faint, ghostly sigh came from the man's lips. 
The bony fingers gripped the hem of the magi's robe and held him fast. Artaban's heart leapt to his throat, not with fear, but with a speechless resentment at this blind delay. If he lingered but for an hour, his companions would think he had given up the journey. But if he went on now, the man would surely die. Artaban turned back to the sick man. He stayed and ministered to the man. At last, the man's strength returned. He sat up and looked around him. Who art thou? he said. And why hast thou sought me here to bring back my life? I am Artaban, the Magi, and I am going to Jerusalem in search of one who is born King of the Jews. The Jew raised his trembling hand solemnly to heaven. I have nothing to give thee in return, only this, that I can tell thee where the Messiah must be sought. For our prophet said that he should be born not in Jerusalem, but in Bethlehem of Judea. May the Lord bring thee in safety to that place, because thou hast had pity upon the sick. Artaban pushed on, but alas, he arrived too late. His friends had left without him, leaving only a note beneath the brick, saying he should purchase provisions and follow them across the desert. And so he did. He sold his sapphire to purchase the caravan of camels to carry him across the sea of sand that lay before him. After much time, he arrived in Bethlehem. The streets of the village seemed to be deserted. From the open door of a cottage, he heard the sound of a woman's voice singing softly. He entered and found a young mother hushing her baby to rest. She told him of the strangers from the Far East who had appeared in the village a few days ago and how they said that a star had guided them to the place where Joseph of Nazareth was lodging with his wife and her newborn child. But the travelers disappeared again, she continued, as suddenly as they had come. The man of Nazareth took the child and his mother and fled away that same night secretly to Egypt. The young mother laid the baby in its cradle and rose to minister to the wants of the guest that fate had brought into her house. But suddenly there came a noise of wild confusion in the streets of the village and a desperate cry, the soldiers, the soldiers of Herod, they are killing our children. The young mother's face grew white with terror. She clasped her child to her bosom. Artaban went quickly and stood in the doorway of the house. The soldiers came hurrying down the street with bloody hands and dripping swords. At the sight of the stranger in his imposing dress, they hesitated with surprise. The captain of the band approached the threshold to thrust him aside, but Artaban did not stir. He said in a low voice, I am all alone in this place, and I am waiting to give this jewel to the prudent captain who will leave me in peace. He showed the ruby, glistening in the hollow of his hand. The captain was amazed at the splendor of the gem. The pupils of his eyes expanded with desire. He stretched out his hand and took the ruby. March on, he cried to his men. Artaban re-entered the cottage. He turned his face to the east and prayed, God of truth, forgive my sin. I have said the thing that is not to save the life of a child and two of my gifts are gone. But the voice of the woman, weeping for joy in the shadow behind him, said very gently, Because thou hast saved the life of my little one, may the Lord always bless thee. And so Artaban pushed on. 
Down into Egypt he traveled in search of the king. Still his search was to no avail, as the king was nowhere to be found. Three and thirty years Artaban searched for the king. Worn and weary and ready to die, he had come for the last time to Jerusalem. It was the season of the Passover, and the city was thronged with strangers. There had been a confusion of tongues in the narrow streets for many days. But on this day, a singular agitation was visible in the multitude. Artaban inquired of a group of people nearby as to the cause of the tumult. We are going, they answered, to a place called Golgotha, outside the city walls, where there is to be an execution. Two famous robbers are to be crucified, and with them another, called Jesus of Nazareth, who has done many wonderful works among the people. Artaban's heart beat unsteadily with the excitement of old age. He said to himself, it may be that I shall at last find the king and in the hands of his enemies no less and shall come in time to offer my pearl for his ransom before he dies. So the old man followed the multitude towards the gate of the city. Just then, a troop of soldiers came down the street dragging a young girl Suddenly, she broke from the hands of her tormentors and threw herself at Artaban's feet. Have pity on me, she cried, and save me. My father is dead, and I am seized for his debts to be sold as a slave. Artaban trembled. It was the old conflict in his soul, which had come to him in Palm Grove of Persia and in the cottage at Bethlehem. Twice, the gift which he had consecrated to the worship of God had been drawn to the service of humanity. He took the pearl from his bosom and laid it in the hand of the slave girl. This is thy ransom, daughter. It is the last of my treasures, which I kept for the king. While he spoke, the darkness of the sky deepened, and tremors ran through the earth. The walls of the houses rocked to and fro. Stones were loose and crashed into the street. The soldiers fled in terror, but Artaban and the girl whom he had ransomed crouched helpless beneath the wall. A heavy tile, shaken from the roof, fell and struck the old man on the temple. He lay breathless and pale, with his grey head resting on the girl's shoulder and blood trickling from the wound. Then the old man's lips began to move, and the girl heard him say, Not so, my lord, for when saw I thee hungry and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Three and thirty years have I looked for thee, but I have never seen thy face, nor ministered to thee, my king. He ceased, and there came a sound akin to a sweet voice. The maid heard it, very faint and far away, and it seemed as though she understood the words. Verily I say unto thee, Inasmuch as thou hast done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, thou hast done it unto me. A calm radiance of wonder and joy lighted the pale face of Artaban. A long breath of relief exhaled gently from his lips. His journey was ended. His treasures were accepted. The other wise man had found the king. Artaban, the other wise man, had been on a spiritual journey, searching for the king born under the star. He wanted to give this person, Jesus, a gift worthy of a king. Artaban had never met Jesus, and yet 
he lived in his way, giving love freely to all he encountered. He was rewarded in the end, receiving praise from his king. The other wise men had never met Jesus, and yet he loved as Jesus had modeled. I encourage you to be like the wise men and follow the light wherever it leads, to be led to the revelation of God's plan and kingdom for you, to speak, seek spiritual wholeness as you journey from darkness into light, to really understand how much God loves you. Let us pray. God of stars and epiphanies, guide us in light and darkness to follow your leading and to recognize your presence. Prepare us to welcome the events and people that mark turning points in our lives. Stir our imaginations to honor the dreams that send us in new directions. Grant us the courage to follow the signs that lead to you. Amen.